Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rose, and welcome to episode 270 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are in an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe in your favor and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big game out last week was F1 Manager 2024, and the games coming out this week include Sword and Fairy in 2, Dead Link, Death Noodle Delivery, Roots of Pacha, Airport Sim, Beastie Bay DX, Land Nama, Forest Camp Story, Mars 2110, Curio City, Tensi, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, Arrow the Acrobat, Scylla, Shmup Mania, The Mortuary Assistant, Sugar Tanks 2, and Closer the Distance. A new Game Pass edition was made this past week, and maybe the biggest one of all time, just because of the franchise, and that is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the first Call of Duty game in Game Pass. Let's go. More are probably on the way. Now to last week's biggest news stories, and we have four to cover this week. Number one, GTA 6 won't be affected by the SAG after strike. Jordan Midler at Video Games Chronicle writes, It was previously assumed that Rockstar's next game would be subject to the strike. However, Grand Theft Auto 6 won't be affected by the ongoing SAG after strike. Despite earlier confusion over the status of the game, according to Kotaku reporter Ethan Gotch, a representative for the union has said that performers working on the game are allowed to continue working on the project. It is currently unknown which performers are involved in the game, and outside of fans attempting to uncover the voice talent for the two main characters in Grand Theft Auto 6, little is known about the game's wider cast. The strike, which has been called by SAG-AFTRA, the labor union for the American actors, began on July 26th. The strike was called after the union failed to negotiate acceptable protections around the use of AI for its members, it said. Last September, SAG-AFTRA members approved strike action if the union was unable to get terms it considered acceptable when negotiating the interactive media agreement. SAG-AFTRA has been in negotiations with several video game companies and their performance production arms since October 2022, including Activision Productions, Blindlight, Disney Character Voices, EA Productions, Formosa Interactive, Insomniac Games, Epic Games, Take-Two Productions, VoiceWorks Productions, and WB Games. These companies now likely won't be able to hire unionized actors to perform motion capture or voiceover work for their games. Grand Theft Auto 6 will be released for PlayStation 5 and Series X and S in 2025. This is a big one as this quickly took over X and Twitter, whatever you want to call it these days, seeing that this could in fact the release date for Grand Theft Auto 6, however that has quickly been dispelled. As for the members of sag aftra keep fighting, I hope you guys do get the protections you need so that AI does not take over our industry, at least like this. Number 2. Stalker 2 delayed again, now arriving on Xbox in November. Tom West at True Achievements writes, We will not be collecting the Stalker 2 achievements in September as originally planned, as GSC Game World has announced that Stalker 2 has been delayed again. The long-awaited open-world Xbox game will now launch on Series X and S PC and Xbox Game Pass on November 20th. As announced via a statement on the official Stalker 2 X account, the post-apocalyptic game will now launch later this year, so SGC Game World has time to fix the final bugs plaguing the game. Quote, Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl will now be launching on November 20th, 2024, moving from the previously planned date of September 5th, 2024, end quote. GSC Game World says, but we know you might be tired of waiting and we truly appreciate your patience. These two additional months will give us the chance to fix more unexpected anomalies, or simply bugs as you call them, end quote. Announced in 2020, Stalker 2 later got a release date of April 28th, 2022. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, GSE Game World has had to delay its upcoming game on multiple occasions. Its previous delay was back in January, which moved Stalker 2 out of an early 2024 window, with a September release date so the team could work on the feedback it received from a demo. We will get a much closer look at the game beforehand, however, as the team says the first Stalker 2 developer deep dive will drop on Xbox's media channels in August. We can expect to see never-before-seen content, including interviews and behind-the-scenes looks into the development process, new footage showing a world overview, various locations, and of course gameplay, as well as a full video walkthrough of one of the story quests, so it's certainly something to look forward to. This is another one. This game has really intrigued me for a long time, and I understand everything that has caused this game to be delayed, but it is becoming exhausting with how much the game keeps moving. Just don't put the release date on it until you are certain. 
hopefully this is the last one and everyone will be able to get to enjoy this game in November. Number three, Xbox is reportedly exploring more new Game Pass tiers. Tom Ivan at Video Games Chronicle writes, According to Windows Central sources, these include cloud-only and ad-supported tiers and potentially the return of a family subscription option. Microsoft is reportedly working towards a cloud-only Game Pass tier that would be relatively cheap and accessible as users wouldn't need to own a console. It's claimed that subscribers to this tier would also be able to purchase digital games, which would tie in with Microsoft's plan to let players stream titles they own through Xbox Cloud Gaming. Windows Central also claimed to have heard very tentative rumors that the Xbox Game Pass friends and family plan could return in some form. Testing of a family membership which allowed 5 people to access a single subscription for $24.99 a price reportedly considered to be too generous by publishers, took place across eight countries between the summers of 2022 and 2023. And while Microsoft previously said it was exploring the possibility of offering access to Game Pass in exchange for viewing advertisements, Windows Central claimed the company isn't currently actively working towards an ad-based subscription tier. Earlier this month, Microsoft raised Xbox Game Pass prices and announced plans to introduce a new standard subscription tier that doesn't include day one releases. Up until a week and a half ago where they made all the changes to Game Pass with the price increase and now all of the different very confusing tiers, I would have said, and I still do think, the Xbox Cloud Gaming specific tier makes sense. Now though, it's just so muddled with how many tiers. I mean, are we really going to have like eight tiers? I know Xbox, and I've touted on this show before, is all about giving players all the options they want, what they really like. But you still need to be able to have clear messaging, and how are you going to do that with like six or seven Game Pass tiers? If you're still able to, go seek out some deals for Game Pass while we're talking about it. I did go a little out of control and found a deal on Game Pass Ultimate subscriptions and might have extended my membership till 2027. Literally got an error message that I could not extend it anymore, so hopefully that works out. And number four, massive Fallout 4 mod Fallout London out now. Wesley Impool at IGN writes, the Fallout London mod is out now, available to download from GOG. If you download the mod via GOG, it will work with Fallout 4 Game of the Year edition from both GOG and Steam. Fallout London is compatible with the pre-patched version 1.10.163.0 of Fallout 4 Game of the Year edition. A next-gen compatible version of the mod is currently in development, but it does not have a release date yet. The GOG version is exactly the pre-patched one, which the PC storefront maintained in order to provide time for modding communities to update their mods. This means you'll be able to launch Fall of London installation right away. The Steam version of the game is right after the next-gen update, making it non-compatible. This means you'll need to have downgraded your game to the compatible pre-patch version before proceeding with the installation. To simplify the mod installation itself, GOG worked with Fall of London developer Team Fallen to create a dedicated launcher that installs the mod with one click via GOG Galaxy or offline installers. All you need to do is have a copy of Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition installed, either on GOG or the downgraded Steam version. Grab Fallout London from GOG, run the mod launcher by clicking play on Fallout London's game view in GOG Galaxy or its offline installer, and then play. I wanted to highlight this as this is awesome. I can't believe how big and expansive this mod is with this release. People really want to get more out of their Fallout and Fallout 4 experience. Definitely check this out. Now, as always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and since we're talking about Grand Theft Auto, this might not be a surprise to many, but GTA V was once the most expensive game ever. Credit to Jordan Woods at Screen Rant. If there was ever proof that sometimes it's worth spending money in order to make money, then it's GTA V. Fresh off the massive success of Rockstar Games' other titles like Red Dead Redemption and Max Payne 3, Rockstar was apparently willing to invest heavily to make the newest entry in its biggest franchise a success. It ultimately paid off with GTA V becoming one of the best Rockstar games ever. At $265 million, GTA V's combined budget became the biggest of any video game in history at the time of its release in 2013. While that figure has since been beaten by the likes of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, it highlights the sheer scale of production the game was working with and shows how the developers were able to craft such an expansive and polished experience. Given how quickly its sales dwarfed its budget, the investment evidently paid off. Crazy that Grand Theft Auto V has already been dethroned as the most expensive game ever made, and GTA V, the game that has been on the top selling charts pretty much every week on most platforms since 2013, is still insane to me this day, and continues to be the best selling entertainment property of all time, that is of course until GTA VI, most likely. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. 
If you like the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast service, share it with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I haven't had too much time to play, but I've got a couple more hours into Elden Ring, and I just continue to simply love this game. Did not see this coming. My name is Brian Rose. You can follow me on Xbox at Rose 93 Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.